Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute honor. Chris Swear, everybody, let him hear it. Oh my God, what is going on, everybody? Oh damn, this is this is uh, something. This is uh, pretty cool. I really uh, I really appreciate this. So here's something that I stopped doing recently. I've stopped going to all these bargain clips places to get my hair cut because they're all pretty terrible. And I think by far the worst one has got to be great clips. Like I have never once left a great clips feeling like I had gotten my full six dollars worth. That's bad. They always tell them the same things. They're like, oh, you got cow licks. Nothing we can do. Sorry. At least try. Me having cow licks doesn't explain why I'm leaving with one sideburn right now. Like, you have to focus. And I give very few suggestions on how to cut my hair, but I never once recall telling them, like, yeah, could you just make sure you use no effort? I just want to look like I've been drinking all day. <laughs> one thing I do like about Grey Clips, and they have this at every single one, they have magazines there filled with pictures of haircuts that you can't get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd be like if you went out to eat at a crappy restaurant and as you wait, they just hand you menus of better places to eat around town. <laughs> like they're taunting you, like, yeah, check this out. <laughs> If only. We're pretty bad and you're very poor. I have this theory about Great Clips, and I believe the ladies that cut hair at Great Clips are also the same ladies that serve at Waffle Houses. You feel me on that? Like, they all have a very similar, like, laid-back approach to their job, and all for whatever reason, all seem to come from that, like, same top-heavy lunch lady bosom mold, we'll say. And I got to test this theory the last time I was getting my hair cut at a Great Clips, because as the lady was cutting my hair, she bent over and she accidentally pressed one of her boobs up against my ear, and I could hear hash browns burning. She smothered me and covered me. All right. So you guys are drinking, that's cool. That's hip. I, uh, I haven't been drinking much lately. I've been getting more like uh, caffeine, but uh, you gotta watch out for that stuff. Like one for obvious health reasons, but there's also like a certain culture to it. You know, like what you drink, we need a little pep in your step, could advertise something about you. So if you see someone drinking like a Red Bull, you could think like, oh, this is like a type A personality. Or if you see someone drinking like a hot tea, you could think something entirely different. And I know that for me, Anytime that I ever see anyone with a monster energy drink, I always find myself thinking, is hepatitis an airborne disease? Because holy bed bugs. And for those of you who don't know, monster energy drink is essentially like Mountain Dew's younger cousin with ADHD and a pet snake. Just the worst. At least those are the only people I ever see with that drink. Right, it's always the same like sketchy pale dude with like a flat bill, chin strap beard, very aggressive t-shirt. Looks like they might be part of some underground vaping league. You know, you take IDs, everyone just blows out their name and vape smoke like, Shh, Kyle. Like if you had a doctor's appointment, and your doctor was drinking a monster. First off, you probably have free health insurance. But you would leave, you wouldn't stay for that, right? There'd probably be no copay either, right? Just like fist bump and say X Games at the same time. Or you just have to give him part of the pills that he prescribes you. Right, like fucking finder's fee, bro. The doctor is in. Need a Percocet. And they call it Monster, which is just way too on the nose for that demographic of people, right? I have never heard of a product name so perfectly match its clientele. It just makes me wish they made commercials, right? So you hear them talk like directly to their target audience on television, 
know, hear what they really think about them, right? Like, so like one day they're doing like this sweepstakes contest. So you hear a commercial just like, we hid a golden tobacco dip pouch in one of our monster cans. <laughs> Find her missing dip pouch, you pay for all your DUI court fees for life. <laughs> Second place, Kid Rock prank phone calls your mother. So a lot of my friends have been paying off their student loan debts now, which uh, that sounds like it sucks. I, uh, I actually graduated college without any debt, but I graduated with a fine arts degree, so kind of a wash. <laughs> they should charge half for fine arts degrees, right? Or at least apologize when they give her your diploma, right? Like, hey, we're sorry about that. You know, or like wrap up a 20 and a list of all the local Applebee's that are hired. Something useful. People would tell me, they're like, oh, you got a degree. You'll be fine, you got a degree. I have a degree in painting. <laughs> Do you know how bonkers you come off to companies trying to apply to a job with a degree in painting? You do not come off right. Like, hey, you guys need any painters? <laughs> like walls? <laughs> nah, like uh, landscapes. <laughs> or naked angel babies. Never covered walls. Also, I'm not sure if you all realize this, but uh, you actually do not need a degree to paint. You can just do that. Yeah, whether or not someone went to college has never once been the reason a painting hasn't been bought ever. That's not how eccentric millionaires are buying their works of art. They're going into galleries, seeing something they like, being like, this is pretty nice. I'd like to buy this. But first, what was his GPA? <laughs> Two nine? <coughs> Not in my foyer. <laughs> Two nine. So my wife likes to play practical jokes on me, but uh, I think she's terrible at them. Or at least you be the judge. This is the last practical joke that she played on me. She took from one of her hair brushes, all of her hair, wadded it up, and then hid it in my wallet. <laughs> Which was horrifying. <laughs> like I opened up my wallet at home and pulled out, looked like this haunted Amish Brillo pad made of nightmares. Afraid as I was touching, I'd start having flashbacks to barns I've never built. <laughs> Wake up middle of the night in a cold sweat, like oh, Ezekiel. <laughs> the gazebo. <laughs> so I called my wife up. I was like, hey, I found your present. That was pretty creepy. Let's not do that again. <laughs> and then I asked her, it's like, so how, how'd you know I was gonna find that at the house and not like out in public? She was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Which that's a really crucial element to that particular practical joke. Like I've never pulled out a wad of human hair in public. <laughs> but I gotta imagine things don't go your way after. <laughs> right, like I was going out to a bar before that. You can't start a tab after that happens. No one's cool enough to pull out like a billfold of hair and still be able to order a drink. Right, how's that gonna happen? You just go like, ho, hey. Just keep it open. <laughs> Chip reader's a little funky. <laughs> it's my wife's hair. No, my wife, she has a OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which means she always has like touch and count things like a certain amount of times. Always just looking like she's just putting spells on all of her appliances. <laughs> But like I've become a lot more aware of like how frequently you hear people use OCD as like a term, but they never use it correctly, right? It's always someone being like, uh, yeah, I'm so OCD. I always have to chew on my food and I don't like to sleep outside. <laughs> cool. But uh, like the most common way you hear people misuse it is just like a way to uh, talk about organization, which is, I've done it too, it's relatively harmless. So like an example would be is someone will say like, uh, I went OCD in the kitchen and the pantries never looked nicer. Which isn't really accurate because OCD is very rarely beneficial. 
Like, if someone really did go OCD in the kitchen, it'd be like, yeah, my pinky accidentally touched the garbage can. So I burned all the groceries. <laughs> and I alphabetized the knives again. <laughs> Pantra's on fire. But so like the most egregious way you hear people misuse it is this like a way to just like, just like draw attention to themselves, right? So normally it's like some dude at a restaurant just being like, uh, yeah, I'm so OCD, I always have to have a craft beer every time I eat a steak. Which that dude's a douche to begin with, right? <laughs> but that's gotta be way more obnoxious, being someone with actual OCD sitting across from them. That's gotta be like really difficult to hear that and not just wanna chime in, you know, and just be like, oh my God, you have OCD too? That is so crazy because I didn't touch all the car handles in the parking lot, so my sister doesn't have a miscarriage. <laughs> Craft beer every time you have a steak? How do you do it? Uh, my wife is here, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to tell that joke another four times. Very sorry. Very sorry about that. Anyone else out there depressed? Really depressed all the time? Yeah, make some noise if you're depressed. Ooh, fuck yeah! Need that serotonin. Dude, I've been getting so depressed lately, like sometimes, like I'll be so depressed, I'll think about renting a Jeep. Right? Not so like I'll get outdoors or anything, just so somebody will wave to me. You know, something. We were talking about, uh, that's fine, get it out. That's fine, I'll wait on you. We were talking about uh, having kids lately, but I, I don't think it's gonna happen. You know, because to be like totally honest, uh, I shoot blanks in the bedroom and it is really difficult for her to concentrate with me firing guns during sex. <laughs> crazy. Actually, we don't allow any guns in our house. We don't allow any guns in our house for the same reason we don't allow any dildos. That's because we know that eventually I'm just going to use them on myself. Right? There we go. There we are. Gun dildo joke with the applause break. <laughs> right? <laughs> What happened to Chris? Friendly fire. <laughs> Just safe bet, whatever you find in my nightstand, it's been in my mouth. <laughs> it's a Jeep thing. Yeah, we're talking about uh, having kids or uh, getting a cat. I think the answer is probably cat, you know? Like one, I don't think we're ready for the responsibility of a kid. And also, I don't think any kid wants to find out that's their origin story. You feel me on that? Like finding out you're a mistake, that's one thing. But finding out you were ever in competition with a free cat, that's gonna cause some collateral damage, right? You don't want it to be a bad story. You certainly don't want it to be like a close call. Because what happens like years later when your kid asks you, just like, oh, so how did I get to be here? You don't want to have to be like, well, the animal shelter was closed that Sunday. And <laughs> as we're waiting in the parking lot trying to figure out what to do while your mom's favorite Buck Cherry song came on the radio and... <laughs> the rest is history. That's gonna be a weird kid, right? Years later, introducing himself at the new school, just being like, hey, name's Mittens, transfer student. <laughs> uh, so I've been starting to understand some things, though, about, like, kids. Uh, starting to understand that expression, it takes a village to raise a kid. Like, uh, this happened recently. I went over to one of my friend's houses for a party, and at one point during the party, I found myself alone in the living room, just sitting on a couch by myself. And then my friend's kid walks in, who's just barely old enough to walk at this point. 
He walks up to a table in front of me. He finds a plate full of food. He grabs a handful of cheese off this plate, walks over to my friend's entertainment system, sticks his fist inside the subwoofer, <laughs> drops the cheese, and walks away. And then I had to look around to see if any parent saw me see the kid do that. <laughs> And we got away with it. It's pretty good. Pretty tight with that kid now. We sell uh, charcuterie boards and that's it. No, but that's just what that expression means, right? I mean, sometimes it takes more than just the parents to help pitch in to at least prevent something from happening to a kid. Right, that's why I think that situation that happened not that long ago at the Cincinnati Zoo, where that kid got away from his parents and got into the gorilla exhibit and they had to shoot and kill that gorilla which is a horrible, horrible situation. However, I feel very confident that there had to have been more people there that day that saw that whole thing developing and chose to not get involved, right? I'm sure there's been someone there that day, just like me, no kids, sitting on a bench by themselves, just thinking, this is such a boring day at the zoo right now. Oh, what's that kid doing? <laughs> oh, he can't possibly think he's gonna be able to. Oh God, he's going for it. <laughs> oh, and his parents don't see it. This will be pretty fun. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> sure, go for a little buddy. <gasps> oh God, he is in. <laughs> he is in there and I am off to the hippo exhibit. <laughs> Not getting my hands on that train wreck. So I'm from Kentucky, uh, except when I travel. There we go, some bluegrass babes in the house, yeah. Put your shoes back on, come on. We're out. No, but I am from Kentucky, uh, except when I travel. When I travel, I just tell people I'm from Cincinnati. I do that for a lot of reasons. Like when you tell someone you're from Cincinnati, they look at you like, oh, you're a person. <laughs> from a place. Please continue. That's not even close to the reaction you get when you tell someone you're from Kentucky. First off, they look at you like they're smarter than you. And then they'll keep an eye on you like you're this semi-loose Jenga piece everyone has to be concerned with now at the party. That's what it feels like when you're like, hey, I'm from Kentucky. And they're like, whoa, take it easy, buddy. There's stuff around, switch to water. That happens everywhere. Like one time my wife and I were traveling back from Chicago. We stopped off at this nice, fancy restaurant. Uh, Chili's, it's pretty good. <laughs> and everything's going fine until uh, I told the waiter, like, no, actually we're going back to Kentucky. That's where we're from. And he gave us that look. And then he kept an eye on us throughout the entire meal. Like he thought we were gonna do something. I don't know what he was thinking he was gonna see. Like, I kind of half expected the waiter to think, like, at some point during the meal, my wife and I were gonna stand up from our table and pull out matching NASCAR rings. <laughs> then we click them together, and Toby Keith just kicks open the front door, starts passing out handguns and black lung. <laughs> waiter just starts shaking his head, like, I fucking do it. Brought in their own Mountain Dew. Should have seen this coming. <laughs> Cancel their well done steaks. <laughs> All right, I'll say maybe 20% of you worked in the service industry. <laughs> a well done steak, that's a staple of a 10% tipper, by the way. <laughs> and they'll complain about it too. Like, how long does it take for a well done steak, anyways? The necessary amount of time? Well, I'm going to have to be a problem. I hate it how anytime you see somebody from Kentucky on television, because they are always a complete moron. 100% of the time. Like, especially on the news. Like, how many times I've been watching the news and they're interviewing some dude from, from Kentucky who has that, like, country redneck voice? And how many times have you listened to that interview? Have you ever thought to yourself, well, that was a good point. 
Doesn't happen. Anytime we make the news, it's a bad day for us, right? Normally it's about like a bakery that's refusing to bake a cake for somebody. That's bad. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Where like a bakery won't like bake a cake for a gay couple. And they always say it's for the same reasons. They're like, well, well we would bake that cake, but uh, the Bible says we can't. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but the Bible actually says the exact same thing about gay wedding cakes as what it does transgender laser tag. <laughs> it's absolutely nothing. It's never in there. But obviously these people are hypocrites, right? Because they'll be open on Sundays and they'll like bake a cake for somebody on their second marriage because they cheated on their first spouse, <laughs> right? And those are the commandments, the big ones. And apparently gay, didn't even crack God's top 10. <laughs> what are we gonna do though? I think we should treat it like, you know how, uh, there should be like a way to check up on them, right? Make sure they're like following all the rules of the Bible. I think it should be like this. You know how they're like uh, secret shoppers will go into bars, make sure they're IDing everybody. I think we should do it like that, you know? So it'll be me, I'll be in charge of this program. I'll get to go into like these uh, Christian bakeries. I'll go up to the counter after they serve somebody. Just be like, uh, excuse me. But you see that gentleman you just sold those cupcakes to? He is uncircumcised. <laughs> Are you not checking for sin skins at the door? <laughs> also, that lady you sold those scones to, she's menstruating right now. She should be covered in a tarp. <laughs> Let you off with a warning. I don't even think God would relate to the gay stuff anymore, right? If he had a chance to ask him, he'd probably distance himself from it now, right? He'd be like, ah, that was back on my Genesis album. That's... I was going through this whole burning bush thing. That's not who I am now. What if that's when God gave the message about the gay cakes, when he was a burning bush? The first time he supposedly ever made his presence known on earth, and that's the message he opened up with. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be a hoot if a comic made a joke about that? I don't know, I think it goes something like this. If God comes down as this burning bush for the first time ever, delivering that message, just like, shh, I'll go to they finish the order. How much are you ordering? No, it's all right. I'm back in the bit now. Y'all don't sell baked goods to queers, all right? I'll be back. <laughs> My favorite time Kentucky made the news uh, happened a few years ago now. This is at uh, the Creation Museum. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, right? Yeah, no science in this arc. <laughs> Place is a riot. They make the news every once in a while. My favorite time they made headlines, international headlines happened a few years ago. This is when some dude was at the Creation Museum and he was riding their zip line and he got struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I couldn't think of a better way to find out that the Creation Museum has a zip line. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> that is just endlessly hilarious to me. To think that some dude whose mantra is, I ain't come from no monkey, gets struck by lightning as he's swinging from tree to tree. Thank you. 
Holy Spirit wrote that joke. So we just put down a pet recently. Give it up for that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it wasn't sick or nothing. Just got tired of its bullshit. You gotta go. <clears throat> but uh, it wasn't a dog or a cat. It was a lizard, so you guys don't have to feel feelings. It's quite all right. Yeah, a lizard doesn't fall like in the spectrum of pets that people give a shit about, right? And I get it, but like, there's like this huge chasm of difference between like dog, cat, lizard, all that. You know, like if you have to put down a pet dog, everyone cares. You know, people will send you a card. Sometimes your work will let you like take the rest of the week off. If you have to put down a pet lizard, that is an on your lunch break scenario. <laughs> Do you know how messed up it is to put down your pet, drive to Jimmy John's and go back to work? Real chill. But I think it has to do with like uh, a furry situation, you know? Because people that have like uh, dogs and cats, they get to say what? They get to say, oh, I have fur babies. That's totally acceptable. I couldn't do that. I couldn't be like, I'm a scale daddy. <laughs> That's not sending the right message. There's like dog parks and stuff out there. There's no lizard park. And if there was, I wouldn't go. That sounds like a bad time. Could you imagine walking out in that mess, not knowing what's going on? See a bunch of like socially awkward dudes all wearing black with their septums pierced. No one's making eye contact. You walk out in that mess, just like, Jesus, what the hell? It's like a hot topic having a fire drill. What, is... what are these indoor creatures doing out here? Get it out, get it out now. <laughs> so my wife and I have this little deal going on right now. That is if I can quit smoking marijuana for two months, she'll stop smoking cigarettes forever. And that's it, that's the deal. And at first I didn't think I could do it, didn't think I could, but now I'm actually 30 days into it. I'm 30 days strong. Appreciate that, thank you. And I'm pretty sure I can do it. I'm pretty sure I can keep lying to my wife. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. No, she doesn't care. This, uh, this happened recently. We went to uh, Hawaii, and the most interesting thing that happened while we were there is that we went to this nude beach where I ended up smoking pot with this naked dude while I was also naked. <laughs> Which, it wasn't part of the original itinerary, but uh, it wasn't an upcharge, so I made the right call. But so what happened was we just went to a regular beach during the day that was just like catty corner to this nude beach. So after like a handful of beers during the afternoon started feeling a little saucy. <laughs> so I had to walk over to the nude beach. And uh, a lot of naked people over there obviously. But the next thing you pick up on right away in this world where pretty much everyone's naked is that all the people who are wearing swimming trunks and shorts look perverted. <laughs> yeah. Because all the naked people are being sociable. They're hanging on the center, dancing, mingling around, having a good time. <laughs> then you got this wall of creep hanging out in the back in the shadows. Like, no, we'll hang out back here with our cargo shorts on. These binoculars are prescription. <laughs> so we just didn't want to be associated with the creepy clothed people. So the game plan became right away is that I was just going to be the designated naked person for my wife and I. <laughs> So that's what we did. We walk in the center with all the naked people. We set up shop. Flipped open a couple towels. Set down her beach bag. And I go and I peel off my trunks. I light a cigarette. And as soon as I do that, this naked dude sees me. He turns and he walks towards me. And I had never tried this hard in my life. Not to look at another man's penis. <clears throat> And it was a sincere challenge. Like, I didn't look directly at it, but I could tell he was hanging 10. Very confident man, probably king of the beach, for all I know. But he just wanted to bum a light for his cigarettes, so I gave him my lighter. I'm like, yeah, sure, you're in charge around here, obviously. He lights his smoke, then he looks at me, he's like, hey, uh, do you... I think we can drop the charades at this point. 
I'm not a cop. I'm not wearing a wire. You can tell that. And also, of course, I smoke pot. I'm naked on a public beach right now. Where do you think I draw the line? That'd be a very bizarre person to exist, right? Like, yeah, I'll get naked in public around total strangers, but what's that, pot? <laughs> no malarkey for me. Real square peg over here. So I said, heck yeah, I'll smoke some of your pots. So he had to go walk back to his towel area to grab his pot because he wasn't wearing any pockets either. <laughs> had to grab that. <clears throat> By the time he comes back, my wife and I were sitting on our towels. So he goes to kneel down by us. And when he does that, I could hear it land. That's big, right, if it makes a noise? It sounded like some rogue bocce ball landing next to us. Just like, heads up! Kicked up sand in my wife's eyes. No apologies. Didn't even replace his divot. Then I got stoned with the king. <laughs> so it's been a pretty f uh, weird few years, I think, you guys, <laughs> if I try to wrap this up. I think uh, the United States, in terms of like, how we get viewed around the, r the rest of the world, we're kind of like the popular pretty girl from high school, right? Like, we get a lot of attention from people, and we tend to not reciprocate any of it, right? <laughs> Like, I imagine, like, the average person in any other country knows a lot more about our culture than what we know about theirs, right? So I imagine that the average person in any other country, that they can speak the English language a little bit, that they're familiar with our currency, and have also seen Caddyshack at least twice. <laughs> I do not know the shape of any other country. <laughs> like, I got an idea of where they're at, but if you show me a flashcard of a country like Afghanistan, I have no idea. That might be Afghanistan, could be West Virginia. <laughs> I'm not certain. And I'm not alone with that. I feel like I'm like most Americans. It's to where if your country isn't shaped like a boot <laughs> or isn't already America, not gonna recognize you. <laughs> that's geography, that's pretty hard. I get reminded how bad I am at geography, like anytime there's a breaking news story about a foreign country. Because they always do that same thing on the news where they use that like green screen, Google Earth image, and like some dude with like a felt tip marker points right at the one they're talking about. I could never be that guy, not in a million years. If I was that guy in front of the green screen that day and something happened in Syria, it'd go poorly. <laughs> I'd be like, what's that? Syria? Okay. You said Syria, right? Just don't appoint the wrong one. It's gonna be a... This one. Or that one. Not the boot. Back to you, Dan. There are some people out there in certain countries that hate the United States so much they're willing to buy our flag for the purpose of burning. And that is crazy that their hate can stimulate both of our economies. <laughs> kind of rad. As Americans, we would never do that, though. We wouldn't. Because as Americans, we have no idea what anyone else's flag even looks like. <laughs> If we wanted to protest, and Google was down that day, it would be the most unorganized thing you have ever seen. Like half the people would try to light on fire some minor league soccer flag. Everyone else would be launching Ikea furniture in the Boston Harbor, just looking around for a leader to step up. Like whoever went to Epcot last, please take the wheel on this one. 
And that's it for me, guys. Thank you all so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Finger guns. Finger guns. <laughs>